Government and parliamentary sources say lawmakers in Niger Republic will on Friday for the first time debate the presence of foreign forces fighting terrorists in the Sahel region. A government source says a vote will follow as an official document handed over to lawmakers show new facilities will be built for the forces. Some activists are campaigning against the presence of foreign troops branding them as occupiers who threaten national sovereignty. However, the outcome of the votes in, in little doubt with the parliament in Niamey, totally dominated by allies of President Mohamed Bazoum. Niger has the support of several Western countries in its battle against terrorists, including the United States and France, which have military bases in the country. Now, prospects of a swift return to civilian rule in Chad seem to be fading a year after the son of the country's veteran leader took helm after his father died fighting rebels. The international community, led by France, swiftly endorsed Mohamed Idris Debis Ibno, a 37-year-old four-star general, after Idris Debis Sr.'s dramatic demise. Both his father's death and his son's succession as transitional leader of the head of a 15-member junta were announced on April the 20th, 2021. But Chad's a leader, Mohamed Idris Debi, while reflecting on the anniversary of his father's death, says the country's transition is moving forward resolutely. Demontant the pronostic that presaged the déchirure social for our nation and the chaos institutional for our country, the transition continues resolutely son chemin depuis une année, tant bien que mal. Pour la première fois, depuis 1979, le soldat tchadien est aujourd'hui payé à la solde indiciaire, ce qui lui donnera la possibilité de cotiser, aussi bien pour la retraite que pour la prévoyance sociale. Comme annoncé précédemment, les travaux du dialogue national inclusif commenceront le 10 mai 2022 à Anjamena. C'est un rendez-vous crucial à ne pas manquer, à l'issue duquel notre cher et beau pays va se doter des institutions pérennes répondant aux aspirations profondes et légitimes du peuple tchadien souverain. Prenons la pleine mesure de cette ultime opportunité que nous offre aujourd'hui l'histoire pour nous retrouver autour d'une table pour discuter ensemble, librement, sereinement et souverainement de l'avenir de notre cher et beau pays. Earlier on, Hoinati, a, a senior researcher at the Lake Chad Basin Program at the Institute of Security Studies, joined us to discuss the situation in Chad. I think that uh, globally, since the death of President Debbie, so since one year ago, uh, what we observe on the, f the ground is that the security situation in that region has remained as volatile as before, with the two Boko Haram factions continue to wreak havoc on communities on, uh, and on the military forces. Uh, since the death of uh, Shekau, uh, his rival faction, to mean ISWAP, uh, seems to be more prominent on the ground. So generally, what we could say is that despite the combined effort of the four armies uh, to mean uh, Chadian, Nigerian, Niger, and Cameroonian army, but also uh, the multinational joint task force, the situation on the ground remained uh, as volatile as it used to be before the death. The debate actually uh, holding the, in Doha is uh, as, as large as possible with a lot of um, uh, political military groups represented there. And uh, so it's a negotiation between those different groups uh, and the transitional uh, government uh, started some weeks ago. And uh, this debate started after several postponements and delays. Uh, and even at the beginning, there was a lot of difficulties, you know, starting those debates. Uh, all those difficulties illustrate how difficult it is uh, for these different stakeholders to hold several discussions. And currently, it's very difficult uh, to speculate on the real outcome of this dialogue. Uh, however, uh, hopes for a sincere reconciliation agreement seems to be fading with some major political military movement, such as the CSMF that are withdrawing from the, the talks, while others are still at the table are taking a very strong uh, 
hold against the draft agreement proposed by the state. The transitional government is insisting on maintaining the date of the 10th of, uh, 10th of May uh, for the inclusive national day. Uh, however, uh, even if the, the dialogue were to be held on that day, you know, the process of organizing the elections, I uh, wish, uh, wish I represent the point of completion of the transition, has yet to begin. And after May, there will be less than six months left to do this. And uh, to my opinion, this seems very short, you know, uh, for uh, certain elections to be held. And uh, furthermore, I also wonder how, without an effective peace achieved through a reconciliation and a ceasefire with the political militaries and an appeasement of the so social political tensions within the country, the transitional government will be able to move suddenly toward elections that respect the standards in that regard.